right, so to get you up to date, we're gonna start installing some more parts on the Evo today. Um, what we've done so far, well, this is this is what's come while we were we were in Helen doing a job fixing up the Destination OG house. But while while I was gone, this is what showed up. So there's exhaust systems, there's um, uh, strut tower braces or brace um, spacers, rotors, lug nuts. Um, yeah, so here's like that's that's the strut bar, strut tower bar brace. Um, there should be. There's a bar that goes under the car too. Matt ordered a, a different one. Um, I've got it off over there. It's like a cross cross brace. Um, I don't know if that's here yet, but anyway, so that's got to go onto the car, or at least some of it. Um, so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to do brake fluid flush. So I bought the correct adapter from Motive. So this is a Mitsubishi specific. I think it probably fits other vehicles too, but we didn't have the right one for Mitsubishi. So I ordered this. So that's on. We do that next. We've got the, the header is done. Um, this elbow, I guess out of turbo elbow where the um, O2 sensor goes to. In fact, I still have to install the O2 sensor into it. That's done. Exhaust is done. Um, you saw that from the previous video, the CSF radiators in. We've got a reservoir that's going here, a new reservoir for the coolant. There's also another reservoir for the power steering that Matt ordered. Um, oh, we also changed the ACD fluid last week. All the fluids are done now, 100% except for coolant. We can't install the coolant yet anyway, because he had to get a, a specific radiator hose that goes from the, because this is a left hand um, return to engine um, instead of being in the center. So this hose is going to go from here. We still have to install that. There's a lot to do. And then on top of that, he, we were thinking about doing the timing belt just because of the age, not that it's necessarily, definitely doesn't have the miles necessary. I'm not convinced we need to do it, but you know, maybe it's just peace of mind kind of thing. We have the timing belt. There's also a balancer belt and then the serpentine belt. So I have to order, there are three specific tools that I have to order to do the timing belt. He also bought a carbon fiber timing belt cover and coil packs and spark plugs. We still have to do that. Yeah, it's kind of like do it all, right? It's what we were just talking about, right, Mike? How not too many people get to buy an Evo 8 and then just buy everything there is for it and just do it right now. That's yeah. pretty cool. Um, but anyway, I think we'll get started. I'm gonna do the brake flush and the clutch um, flush too. Just get new fluid in it because it's probably original. So, and you know how that stuff collects moisture, so we don't want to we don't want to be driving it with that in there. I think. Okay, so this should fit in here. It's specific to this car, so it does have an O-ring. It goes in, there we go. Yeah, that's right, perfect. I do like it. it makes it a lot easier because you can do it by yourself. It goes somewhere between 12 and 15 PSI. What does that say? That's about 13. Okay, so let's get the car up in the air and then I'll, ble I'll start with the clutch. So in this car, the reservoir for brakes it, it's shared shared with the clutch. So the clutch and the brake reservoir are the same. So there's a little piggyback, little hose back here that feeds the clutch slave cylinder or master cylinder. So you, at least you only have to use one reservoir to, to uh, fill both. You know, I was just talking to you about that. That's going away in, what, 10 days, 11 days? It's crazy. Someone's going to get that 300 grand. Like, here you go, here's the keys, enjoy. Yeah, man, I wish we could, wish we could qualify, Mike. Yeah. Just imagine getting called. call. Imagine Matt calling saying, hey, uh, Mike, uh, this is Matt Mormon, Sess Garage. Uh, do you like GT3s? RSs maybe? Well, here's your free one. Come get it. I'd lose it. Crazy. Like, that's life changing. I mean, especially if you're, let's say you're a young guy change your life it absolutely would change your life mike you you know even if you we were talking about whether it'd be best to sell it invest the money or keep it i guess if you already established you you have done well for yourself you could afford to pay the tax it might be a situation where if you've got your retirement handled you uh you just hang on to it you pay the tax on it you get a title loan on it or if you're really doing well you just pay the tax and then you just sit on it because i i really think even though the car seems like 
it's been driven, it's got 30,000 miles on it, but I imagine 10 years from now, what would it be worth? 400, 500 grand, you know? You know, there's that avenue, or you could just drive it, or you can sell it and invest the money, or if you don't own a house, you could sell it and pay the tax and have a nice, sweet 200 plus thousand dollar down payment for a house. So anyway, whoever gets it, they're gonna be pretty happy. I don't know, even if you have already made it in life, to get that, shoot, I mean, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, I think it's, it's definitely a cool car. It's kind of, um, I mean, they've changed a lot. Like the 991 is way different than that car. It's wider, it looks completely different. Yeah. So this is, this is like kind of old school RS a little bit. Imagine being a young guy, 25, 30 years old, winning that. If you're married, your wife's gonna tell you you don't need it and we need to sell it because she wants to get a new Lexus or something. <laughs> That's the only battle. <laughs> yeah, anyway. All right, so let me get this clutch fluid started. Clutch, slave cylinders right here, bleed screws here. So all I have to do is hook a little hose onto this, crack this loose, and we will effectively flush all the old fluid out of that. I'm gonna let it flush for quite a while, simply because It'll get the reservoir full of the new fluid and we'll use this as the, as the spot to get most of the fluid out of the reservoir. That way, all the new fluid that goes in from reservoir down when I do the brakes, it'll all be fresh fluid from there on out. So um, I hope that makes sense. I know how it makes sense in my head. So anyway, let's get Matt just get out here with all his, he's looking at all the boxes he has to do. Unbox here. Okay, here we go. So now we're getting fluid. I'm gonna let that go for a while. So that way everything that's in the reservoir is fresh. You can definitely tell this fluid's yellower than what we're putting in it. Oh, just talking to I own the car. Nice, got the title already, nice. What do you do, oh, you're doing a clutch? Mm-hmm, clutch and then brakes. You got your- I your, have this brace here. Your rotors are in. I know the, the um, the strut tower brace is here. I think we might need to pump her up, get some more pressure. The guy came, he got, I finally got my ratchet. I got some new snap-ons for you. This is their new, uh, not, not garbage line. Not greasy ones? Not garbage. They're not oiled? These snap-ons, nice ones. It's a new line. It comes grease-free. That's pretty good. I'm Titanium test Probably weighs nothing. Yeah, it's a pretty nice looking piece. I'm probably one of three people in the America that have that sucker. I think what I'll do next, since the clutch is done, the rotors are here. I mean, yeah, the rotors are here, the pads are here. I think I'll, I'll do the rotors, pads, and bleed the brakes. That way the brake system's totally done. So Matt's, why don't we should go look and see what came. So these are slotted or slotted and cross-drilled, or what are they? Slotted? Yeah, good. Yeah, the, that's a Gerber knife. Yeah, it's like the best, because it's super sharp in the point. Yeah, Bryce is trying to get a hold of them so we can put them in the giveaway. Aluminum hat. That's what's at, homie. Yeah, that's a pretty nice piece. So the process we're doing is I'm pulled the caliper, Matt's cleaning the caliper, getting it all dialed in and then he's gonna coat the caliper. While he's doing that, I'll pull the rotor. Uh, we're putting stainless steel brake lines on, which is what I'm doing right now, I'm pulling the brake line. And so by the time I get all this back together, he'll probably have that clean and coated. I'll load the pads on it and then we'll install it on the car. And we'll just do that in all four corners and then bleed everything. These are surprisingly dirty. So I'm getting the steamer out. I think, we'll see. I mean, if I'm not track driving this thing, I wonder if these full fade. I think they'll be okay. And everybody's talking about how these will, these will fade. Is that a chip? No, I think that's some schmutz on there. I really need some, I need some ice is what I need. Some dry ice. This would take two seconds if I had dry ice. So once we get the brakes, timing valve, once we get all these parts done, I'll drive it around a little bit and then we'll go 
and we'll take it down to Scott and we'll get all that undercoating bull crap off the car. Here are those jank lines. Yeah. Yeah, this thing is gonna be it's gonna be pretty nice. The um, two HKS exhaust should ship in a couple days, so before we even get this thing off the lift, <laughs> we'll probably have uh, have another one. We'll take that we'll take that Tomei business off before we even get started, before we even turn it on. I think it's gonna be a thirty second deal. Oh nope. Yeah, fire it up. Yeah, that sounds like. Uh, yep, nope. You gotta use, make sure you're using these new snap-on tools. These new uh, the Japanese, Japanese snap-on snap yeah. tools. Yeah. yeah. I use fuel line wrenches whenever I'm doing brakes because you don't want to round one of these off because if you do, it's a hard line. So if you use these, you you don't have any risk of rounding off the uh, the fitting. And they're on there pretty tight from the factory. So. Okay. Brake line's on, so we'll. Snug that down if we get the caliper back on, and that'll we got new banjo fittings that go right there where the caliper is. So I'll wait for Matt to finish that, and then we'll get this on. In the meantime, get this rotor off. That's that. Let's compare that to the new one. There's the old. One. And then we have a marked. Let's see. So this is right rear. It's this one. Uh, it looks a lot nicer, doesn't it? have to trim I do have to trim the, the brake pad to fit so it doesn't hit the so what I have to do is trim this back metal back because the the with the hats on these rotors as the pair pad wears I think what would happen is this would start hitting the, the hat doing a little armor wheel coating high temp coating for calipers. This hopefully will help them stay clean in the future. It's nice taking them off the car because then we can get the back of it a little better. What I may do I'll probably put this single coat on right now. We'll mount them on the car, I'll let it cure for a day or two. And then right before I put the wheels on, I'll probably slap another coat on. Okay. Well, actually, you know what? I guess I can, I can do the pads on it after. It's all right. I don't see any reason why I can't load them after the fact. Let's see if they'll fit. The pins have to come to the back side, which I think they will. That's yeah, a nice looking stock brake. Yep, I think so. Once we get all that goop off the bottom of the car, it's gonna look great. Okay. You know, when I had these like S2000, Civic, you know, cars back, BMW, M3, I always wanted to do brakes. I just never, you know, it's a lot of money. Yeah. That's the part I always missed out on was doing brakes. Yeah. So I'm gonna go outside and grind this pad to meet, match this radius, and, and this one will slide in the front. I got these just to hold me over until I get some. Just need a black ones to get rid of. These guys, that'll look a little better for now with the stock wheels. Cause these are, what are these called? Um, I never, <laughs> never even heard of this. It's called, uh, what is this called? Like a J seat or something like that? I've never seen these before in my life. It's a different type of yeah, lug seat. It's not a, not a conical. Type. Yeah, I forget what it's called. It's like J something or other. Make so sure these new this ones. is how much I took off and it's not quite enough. So I'm gonna end up, I was trying to, you know, inch up on it, but this, this will still just touch the hat. So I'm gonna take it down to the pad material. This, this part here where it's, Modifying the brake pad would have like sent me off the deep end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, what do I do? How do I do this? What do I even use? 
<laughs> I would, certainly wouldn't have a grinder. You'd be out there with a file in your vice, <laughs> getting frustrated, or, or one of those cheapy no vice, electric yeah. Dremels. I, I'd have it with a, uh, yeah, yeah, a Dremel for sure. Yeah. And um, I'd had to go to Home Depot to buy a Dremel for it. Yeah. Sweet. Complete. Coat the hat here. And put the spacer on. Yeah, then you can put a rear wheel on if you want. Well, actually, I could bleed the brakes, though. Yeah. So I don't do that yet. You know, while I'm here, I'm just going to throw the second coat on right now. Oh, shoot. Don't tip your coating bottle over. That's a little word of wisdom. Just, I just dumped about $1.50 on the ground. This is going to be a real nice car. Wait till you see some Olins. Let me get those, those Muellerized, order Muellerized, uh, ordered today. So what I did is I called Muellerized.com. I talked to John Mueller and then they send you a form and you say, you know, here's what I'm planning to do with the car. In my case, I'm planning to shine, shine it with a diaper, you know, and a microfiber diaper. And uh, so I want street, so like auto cross street level, you know, is kind of what you're looking for. I'm not looking for a track set up, but Olins in general tend to be pretty streetable, even when they are modified. And so he, he does uh, custom springs and he does Swift springs, sends them fully assembled. They're like, 2800 bucks or something like that. And the other side's done. So now I'm pulling this caliper off so Matt can work on cleaning and coating it. Put my graphene gloves on. Cayoprene graphene. Ugh, these are larges though. I don't know if they're going to fit. God, nope. Freaking baby hands. I'll try these chem defenders. I find that I get sweaty in these though. These are a chloroprene, yeah, powder free chloroprene. Yeah, steam ready. This time we'll steam it right from the beginning. Yeah, I think it might be better to clean it first. I mean, it doesn't make such a mess. I was watching this movie on a plane. Which one? It was like, I don't know, Deer or Abby or something like that. Uh-huh. And uh, these two chicks are splitting wood. Uh-huh. Right. And they're wearing safety glasses. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, they've got a, first of all, they probably pre-split the darn wood. Yeah. Or they've got some really dry, you know, most wood you can't just split with a darn, you know, axe. with an axe. You right. have to use an awl. Right. Uh, or awl. But even that, you like all the wood we used to split, mm -hmm. you have to use a splitter. Yeah. Like a hydraulic splitter. Hydraulic splitter, yeah. Yeah, because you could sit there with an axe all day. Well, that's, that's right, especially oak. Yeah, you need like a really old, dry, like mm -hmm. alder or something like that, mm -hmm. maple maybe. Yeah. But anyway, I was like, they, so they, these dorks were trying to watch this movie and they made them put safety glasses. Like who would have safety glasses laying around while you're splitting wood? I know. Freaking dorks. So dumb. This is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, a lot of movies get things wrong, you know? Yeah. What are you doing? I don't think I've ever seen anybody wearing safety glasses. No, you know, I don't even wear them when I'm supposed to. Chopping wood. Yeah. What the heck's gonna happen? Maybe if you got a chainsaw, I get that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Even I then. See that. <laughs> yeah, I could see that maybe. So these shims, I was noticed these shims are glued on, but I, I'm gonna have to look. The new pads did not come with shins, shims. So I may just, I mean, even though these are glued on, I may, I don't know if they're, if it's, it's weird that they only go part of the way around. You can see they're, that one's, I peeled that one off. This one's still glued on. But I may, I may use them. 
These shims are definitely epoxied onto the pad, so I peeled these off. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and install them on there just so that we have them. There's a reason why they're there. So funny thing is, I don't think I've ever seen a shim that only takes up about half of the piston area. And there's an arrow forward which way they're supposed to be mounted or uh, installed. So this is the rear pad on this side. This is the front pad on this side. So I'll go ahead and pull the pins and slide these in. Caliper bolt torque specs are 59 foot-pounds for the rear, 100 for the front. That's it. These aren't undercoating everywhere, man. Or whatever that crap is. The protection. See, look, the dealer just sprayed it on the darn car with everything attached. Nothing taped off or masked off. I kind of clean it off the inside barrel of the wheels, off the brakes. So we're definitely going to go down to the Dreiss lab and dial this thing in for sure. Scott was right. I'm like, ah, we don't need to go there. This car's clean. All right, it was smarter to clean it up a little bit first before doing this. Clean looking caliper right there. If I had dry ice, I'd have cleaned this in 12 seconds. I'm an hour in. I'm gonna get some water. A little yeah. parch, Mike. That was for a Mitsushino mm -hmm. 17, <laughs> not an Evo 8, you know. <laughs> Mitsushino 17. What's the car that they still make? Oh, uh, they make a, an SUV. I don't know what it is. It's not, I don't know, they don't make the Glant. It's probably on 17, it's, iteration shoot, 17. I forget what it's called. It's literally one car. That anyway, on the US side. Yeah, Mitsubishi used to make everything. They man. used to make the Mitsubishi Mighty Max, which was also a Dodge D50. They made a Galant, they made a, Galant, they made a Diamante, the Eclipse, well, they made 3000 great, GT. They make great TVs. They, yeah. And they make, I think they build ships too. Or maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Air conditioners. Mm-hmm. They still make great air conditioners. Yeah. Mitsubishi, they used to make um, uh, fighter planes too. So the kamikaze used to use. Those were the old, good old days. Water tastes, tastes a little bit like pond water. Tastes some a little. See that cup, Mike? Wait. Yeah, that's nice. That is a special edition one off. Oh, uh, what was that from? You pulled it out of the trash and I threw it in. <laughs> Sorry, cutting board. No, guy. I said, you're going to want this. And you said, no, get it before Michelle sees it. Oh, yeah. The last thing she needs is another, another cup. cup. Yeah. There's <laughs> cups everywhere. Wob has been eyeing my cup, too. He needs more cups. Yeah, I don't have any. You don't have enough bad. cups. Quite as nice. No. You, you've, you've got a plethora of cups, Mike. How many cups I have? None. You have your sippy cup there. That's a water bottle. You can call it whatever you want, but it's a sippy cup. It's just a grown-up version of a sippy cup. I'm uninsultable. I know. I, I'm the insulter. You, I don't. You don't. Never insult the insulty. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got all the internet for that. Baba, he told me the other day we, we have. The mileage on this, he said, isn't that year you were born? That was pretty good. Yeah, it was in the video. I thought That's that was the opening funny. of the whole video. Yeah, he, you edited that. I thought it was pretty funny. I thought that was pretty good. Usually, usually you're not very funny. That was pretty good. <laughs> I had to laugh. This doesn't bother me either. You gotta, as soon as you turn that camera on, it's, it's like, it's like, just it's like wit, wit just starts it coming to my head. I have to <laughs> shut it down. Like, like one part of my brain's going, ah! And the other part is just wait, 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 wait. Yeah. I have to shut them both down yeah. and just try to Balance stay focused. between crazy and smart ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. It's a hard hmm. life. All right, this puppy's ready. Is it ready? Okay. I don't like the weight of these. I'd like to have some carbon ceramics. I don't make them. Yeah. I was doing some searching. 
search to no avail. I don't think there's a big market for a Mitsushino. <laughs> Carbon ceramics. Ceramics, yeah. Well, be, considering the kit would cost as much as the car. <laughs> Well, maybe not this one, but not most this of them. one, but most. Yeah. I think wasn't retail for the E92 like 19 or an axle, something like that retail. Oh yeah. So more, like around 40. More than that, yeah. 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 So if you had an original Evo 8 and you were the, you know, it's got 60,000 miles on it, carbon ceramics would definitely cost more than your car's worth. Mm-hmm. I don't know, after these videos though, I think Evos are about to go up in price. Yeah. All the aftermarket stuff too, they're gonna see a rise in sales. Well, you're also gonna see some guys come out of the woodwork, like with the Civics. Mm -hmm. You know, we're like, oh shoot, there is some idiot out there that'll pay 75 grand for an Evo. They'll <laughs> pull it out, of, dust it off. you will put it on, bring a trailer. Yeah. Next everybody's thing I know, be, I'll be bidding on it. Everybody's gonna be turning their odometers back, trying to get some Low mileage cars. Get some of those. Uh, did you ever run the Carfax on this? I think guys. you did, didn't you? Yeah. It's clean as a whistle. Mm-hmm. Well, it was until we got a hold of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This arguably, arguably, you could make this a ninety thousand dollar car to the right person with all the stuff done to it. It's, it's, there's, always, there's always the right buyer out there somewhere. We're devaluing it. I don't know about that. You can't be the only guy. This coating is, this that we're putting on here is not original, so. Oh yeah, that's true. It's ruining it. Those brake pads, not OE. Yeah, they're green. This is kind of a lot of work. I think we need to, next time we go up to Helen, we need to have a Nürburgring competition. Mm, yeah. And then we have need to have a, somehow we need to figure out a leaderboard where people can. I think it's probably pretty easy to do. Yeah, set it up so that every stay, that person that's staying can, can try to beat, it's gotta be a certain car on a certain track. Yeah. There'll be some killers that go there. Well, certainly game. some kids. Trevor would probably slay on that, I guess, guarantee you. There's probably some eight-year-old. Maybe, maybe. Uzbekistan, we can take maybe. him out. Yeah. But he doesn't have Mitsushino brake lines on no, his No, he uh, doesn't have Mitsushino upside down brake lines. Mm -hmm. it's not, no, nope. It's ready. Nice. They're really nice factory brakes. Hell yeah, that's the secret ticket. Stoners and then let the, let the uh, cake, the uh, OG we, we, uh, tire dressing on there, leave it for like a week and then wipe it flat. Look at that. It's great. Got it denibbed. And then you just wipe it. Wipe the excess off. So it looks shiny like those. And you just wipe it. And then you'll be able to build a base and just continue to build on that. Just clean it gently with some brake buster. And then I'm gonna be testing this out. This is a new low pH brake buster. Gotta test out, it's a new formulation. Maddie Speck. Looking forward to bleeding the brakes. I'm just sitting in the driver's seat and take a little nap. It's one of my favorite things to do. Got some good looking brake lines here. Good looking brake pads. That's for all those power stop I'm gonna be doing out there in uh, Lady Lake Boulevard. <laughs> Lady Lake Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> Lake Griffin Road. Mm. Open to be up on uh, Chair Hall Skyway on this sucker. You know, that would, this would be a fun car up there. You could get, mm -hmm. get it set up right. You know what's even more fun? A GT3 RS. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Steps, baby steps, Maddie. <laughs> you gotta go backwards a little bit before you can go forwards. Mm, I don't do that. I need a couch in here. You keep saying that, but you don't get one. Oh, I'll do a few minutes of work, I gotta sit down. I ran a little hard in hell. 
the first few days. Then I went, did some bad things on the plane, ordered some real snacks. Yeah. Oh, that was a terrible. Well, you idea. know, I stopped and got some cinnamon rolls. So I ordered um, with, with you. watermelon slices. Well, that's not bad. No, 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 no. The uh, sugar. Oh, the like candy. The troll. Oh, the yeah, candy. Like yeah. I was like, wait. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> and then I ordered gummy war like the troll worms. Uh -huh, yeah. I know what those are. And then there was this chocolate place that had. Um, oh my gosh. They were like eight dollar Reese's peanut butter cups. Uh huh. Ryan took one bite out of it and threw it away. He didn't know it was eight dollars and seventy five cents. <laughs> It's like there's peanut butter in there. I'm like, you idiot! What do you think it was? It's a peanut uh, butter cup. Oh my god! <laughs> and then, and I had about nine pretzels, chocolate covered pretzels. They were a dollar seventy five a piece. Oh my god! Like, uh, I ate fifty six dollars worth of candy. It's so you're, sick. You're a you're a gifted individual with the mm -hmm. the snacks. A bad, bad night. <laughs> I knew, I knew yeah. I was starting a new program, and then I had to do run a mile and a half, do 80 burpee box jumps and 80 GHD sit-ups. I thought I was gonna die. It's 92 degrees out. Uh huh. <clears throat> yeah. That's why I need a nap. It's gonna look great when we put those. Uh, Shocks on there, the Olins. Everybody's freaking out about the color. You know, uh, because of the flake, when you look at it from different angles. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's always looking. You're looking for me to catch me slipping. I know. Like, gotta knock this guy down a couple of pegs. Yeah. He doesn't have a car. You're he not nearly he as does. smart as you think you are. <laughs> you don't like, know everything. No, I'm, I know. I'm looking at the car. The paint matches, but that's just the way. I know. This color works. Yeah, it shifts depending on the angle. Correct. I think your car might have been repainted. I can tell from the camera. Oh, yeah. Sure you can. All right, so brakes are done. I just have to bleed them now. I did that in the morning.